Hey, what's up guys? Mike here. Today we're going to be starting on the nano tank wall. I actually just got done finishing up a little members video behind the scenes thing, so if that's something that you're interested in and you want to help support the channel, consider becoming a channel member. But let's just get right into this, guys. So we currently have set up, and this isn't the final decision or anything, five small nano tanks, and I guess, well, four, and a paludarium that we're going to be turning into hopefully five really cool aquascapes. Three of the five tanks are these mini clear water box aquariums. They are six gallons, so we have one there, one there, then one up here. This is a random tank, I can't remember, it's kind of like a bookshelf style. And then of course we have this kind of random small paludarium type thing. Waterbox has been a huge help to this channel. They've made a lot of things possible for me, so go send them some love, check out what they have, and hopefully pick out something that you like. Let's get into what we're going to be doing today, guys. We're going to start out by scaping the first of five, and this is going to be this tank right here. I already have gotten started a little bit here, so we have a couple of bonsai trees. That's going to be the obvious thing. We need to get in here and do some rock work, um, but basically all I've done is put these trees in on top of a little bit of substrate. So this is some UN Contra soil. It's the brown. It is, I believe, the fine granule size and I like this stuff a lot. I've been using it in pretty much all the tank setups that I've done lately, which I know isn't a lot, but I love this stuff. We got a bag of it over here. We got a bag of the black colored stuff over here. It's in the Java Fern holding tank over here as well as a bunch of my other tanks. Before we get rolling here though, I do want to answer potentially maybe a question that somebody has, which is what's going on with these two trees? Why do they look so different? So this tree on the right is more of a traditional bonsai tree, I guess. It's a handmade or hand assembled, I should say, bonsai tree, which uses this kind of realistic branching stuff. This is all real wood that is just manufactured by a person. Uh, same thing for this one. Obviously, there's just a different style. So this one uses the little pedestals. So the, the concept is basically the same. You're going to get your plants in this one. You're going to set them in to the branches and they're gonna kind of self hold, at least with most plants. And then this one, you're definitely gonna to have to use some super glue to hold them onto the pedestals. And what I wanna do with this scape is just basically highlight the differences between the two. And we're probably gonna end up using two different plants because uh, I think that's just what we're gonna to have to end up doing. You could use the same plant if you wanted to, like you could put boosts in between the branches and then also glue it over here. But I think what we're gonna do is do this one up like I've done before, which is use Monte Carlo and then we're gonna use some boosts on this one. These bonsai trees definitely come in different sizes, guys. Over here on my super messy table, we have quite a large tree, which is actually only half of what it was originally. I had to break this piece off of it because it was the right thing that I wanted for the ancient gardens tank. But if you can imagine how big some of these things can get, it's pretty impressive. And then over here we have some more smaller ones. This is a medium sized one, I believe, or at least that is how it was classified as, and then another small one that's pretty close to uh, that one that we're gonna be using. If you guys haven't had the chance to aquascape with one of those little mini bonsai trees, I recommend you try it. The smaller ones can be pretty affordable, and they're great for smaller tanks. The larger ones can be pretty expensive, so just keep that in mind. Some good places to find them are Boost Plant, Flip Aquatics, and then there's a third, I think it's like Bonsai Warehouse or something like that. I'll put links for all the places where you can find them in the description if you're interested. And with that, guys, I think it's time to start the epic aquascaping montage.
Alright guys, it is now 24 hours later and our trees are still getting waterlogged. They're very close, but they're still just buoyant enough to float. So if we check this guy out, it looks like actually this one's going to be good. It's almost perfectly buoyant. It can just kind of hang in there. If we left it in another day, it would totally be ready to go. Let's check this guy out. I think he's going to be a little bit more buoyant. Yep, that's floating up to the top. Again, another day or two and this would be totally waterlogged, but I think we're gonna be able to get away with it. So we're gonna take these out and we're gonna get them situated in the tank. Let's start with this guy and let's go ahead and dress him up with his foliage. For that more traditional type of bonsai tree, we're gonna be using Monte Carlo. This is the same stuff that we used in the ancient gardens tank, okay? So a very similar tree, a miniaturized version, and Monte Carlo is a great plant for making these bonsai trees, guys. And we're just gonna pull the Monte Carlo out of the pots and then rest it into the branches of the tree. That should be enough to hold this stuff in place. No need to use super glue or anything like that like we did with the other tree. One of the benefits to working with a branch tree like this, I guess, if you don't wanna have to use super glue, again, the gel type super glue, once it hardens, it's gonna be aquarium safe, guys. I know it's kinda hard to believe, right? But I've done it a lot, used it in tanks for a long period of time with fish and invertebrates and never had any issues. When you're all done, if you have a little bit of the root sticking out of the bottom, hanging off the tree, you can just clip those off with the scissors. It shouldn't impact the growth at all and it'll make it look a little bit nicer. So before we comment on the tree we just made, guys, look at how many pots this little tiny tree took, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pots. And I will say we probably could have used half as many if we would have let those grow out a little bit longer. That honestly is probably the best way to do it if you end up getting pots that don't have a ton of foliage. And so you can just kind of adopt the setup that I've figured out here, which is the little greenhouse method. So just by putting these in an inch or two of water and letting them hang out there, all immersed like this, they will grow very fast. Um, probably in a month, you would double if not triple the foliage on each one of those pots. So that is a method that I really recommend for Monte Carlo. I know it's not the cheapest plant in the world and you do need quite a bit of it when you make these trees. So keep that in mind. I know it might not look super pretty, okay, and it is a little bit more bare, but once this stuff starts to grow, this whole thing is gonna be covered in no time, okay? And it's gonna look really good just like the trees ended up looking in ancient gardens. It just takes about a month and a half. Now that we have the trees in place, guys, I'm gonna move some of these base rocks to cover the bottom of the trees to help hold them in place. Cause again, they're probably gonna float up if we don't do that. And again, if you have time to plan this kind of escape out, that's obviously something that you wanna do. We had kind of an impromptu start date on this guy. So uh, if I could go back in time, I would do this ahead of time so we didn't have to worry about it. But we can just move the rocks back once these things are waterlogged. Now guys, we are gonna be putting fish in this tank in this episode, something I normally don't do, all right? But that means we need to finish up this tank here before we fill it up and we call it good, okay? So let's talk about filtration. Ooh, we better hide this, guys. Now, filtration for smaller tanks, you can get away with a lot. And we're gonna be using a bunch of different filtration or at least a couple different types on the tanks down here. So you can go with the simple HOB. That's always a good choice, one of my favorites. Uh, for this tank in particular, I think we are gonna make use of this Awaza Filto Smart 60, the little canister filter that they make. This is gonna be a great filter for pretty much any kind of nano tank. Great for beta fish, any other fish type you can think of. It's got a lot of room for media, so you can have a pretty beefy, robust filter on even a small tank, regardless if you need it or not. In a tank like this, I'm not really concerned about filtration, to be honest with you. I'm more concerned about getting that water movement, okay? And that's exactly what this thing is gonna do. It's gonna filter the water around the tank, give the plants plenty of opportunity to grab nutrients, and it's gonna do so better than an HOB, right? It's got some directionality to the flow versus an HOB is just gonna pour it down and then cause like an upwell. I don't think those do a very good job of circling water, especially when they get a little gummed up and their flow rates go down, but this is hopefully gonna help that. A 
All right, it looks like we got lucky and the trees haven't floated up yet, guys. So I'm crossing my fingers and I hope they don't. But we do need to talk about what we're gonna do now because there's a few things I wanna change. One is the fact that we can see the filter back there from the front of the tank. So we're gonna just get a white piece of construction paper and put it up behind there and that way we won't see the filter. The second thing is gonna be CO2, okay? And it's in my experience that Monte Carlo can be fine without CO2, but you need it initially when it's starting to get going. Once it's started to grow and it's happy, you can then remove the CO2 and it can be just fine. It's not gonna go anywhere, okay? It's already figured out how it wants to live its life and then it's just happy that way. So in the beginning, we are gonna be using CO2 on this tank and that's solely for the Monte Carlo because if we just leave it in here without the CO2, we might get lucky and it won't die off its leaves are gonna get kinda of small and it's gonna just be chilling, but it's not really gonna give us the effect that we want. We need this stuff to grow. We need it to bush out and grow downwards. And CO2 is really the key to that, in my opinion. The hair grass will also like the CO2 a lot and it'll help encourage it to spread out and eventually form a carpet. The boost and the dwarf sag, they're probably not gonna care all too much, but it's overall really gonna help the look of the tank. You guys might be familiar with CO2 Art. They're the company that makes the regulators that I use down here, and they recently just sent me a bunch of stuff in this box. So we have the Pro SE Series regulator, and we're gonna use that in conjunction with the CO2 adapter for the paintball tank that will ultimately feed our aquarium with the CO2. I'm not gonna go through the whole process of setting up the CO2 system. You guys are probably familiar with this. If you're not, I'll eventually have a detailed guide on how I like to do it over on the website, on the blog. So be on the lookout for that. Also guys, if you wanna get some CO2 art stuff, regulators, diffusers, CO2 lining, anything. They sell a ton of stuff and we got you a code, a 10% off discount. Use code AquaPros at checkout and get 10% off. So we have filtration done, we have CO2 done. Something I didn't touch on was the lighting guys. We just have uh, a current serene LED that's hanging here. So two zip ties holding this thing on. That's totally gonna work out perfect for us and now we don't have to have individual light fixtures on all of our tanks. And we have the same thing that's gonna happen up here. We just haven't gotten there yet. The last thing I wanna do before we call it a day though is add in a little bit of Fritz Turbo Star. This is gonna help to get the bacteria cycle going, make sure that we have plenty of nitrifiers that are gonna be ready to detoxify all the ammonia to nitrite, from nitrite to nitrate, and then we should be ready to add fish tomorrow, or even the same day if we wanted to stay up late tonight and do what we could, but we'll come back out tomorrow, and we'll be all ready to add our fish. All right guys, let's add the fish. Just went and grabbed these chili rasboras from the holding tank that they've been in for a long time. Let's get them in here. All right guys, so we got the chili rasboras in. I'm glad to get them out of just a plain holding tank and into an actual aquascaped home. They're starting to get more comfortable. Still quite a few of them here in the back. Let's try and get a focus. They're just navigating around, getting used to their new home as fish always do when they're in a new tank. I did feed them a little bit of food, so there's a couple up here still getting some nibbles on. And something I did notice, guys, a while back in the holding tank was that we had a couple of the purple emperor tetras in that holding tank, which means somehow those fish got into the Ancient Gardens Aquarium. There's one right there for you. So two of those guys, and it's kind of weird because I don't remember ever taking plants from that Tetra tank and putting it into Ancient Gardens, so it's a little bit of a mystery as to how those fish ended up there. But the more the merrier, you know, and since they're small and they're about the size of the chilies, maybe a little bit bigger, um, we're just gonna go ahead and leave them in there um, until they get a little bit bigger, and then we'll put them back in with the Kurais. I think I said Purple Emperor Tetras. We're talking about Kurai Tetras, guys, my bad. So guys, that is the first of the five tank nanoscape builds that we're gonna be doing here. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the scape. It's a really simple one. Um, we are kind of doing, I guess, an experiment with the two trees just to see how they turn out. Let me know down in the comments which tree you guys like better as of right now. 
okay? So the boost tree or the Monte Carlo tree. Now, personally, I think at the end of the day, the Monte Carlo tree is gonna turn out better long term just because I know it looks like a mess right now. It doesn't look good, but give it a month and this thing will look fantastic, okay? And it'll be interesting to see how the boost does. You know, boost is a slow growing plant and it'll just be interesting to see what happens with this thing. But let me know which one you guys like so far in the comments below, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're new, hit the notification bell so you know when I upload the next video and we'll see you next time.